Just wanted to show you putting together this. Um, I've got Tevzel wire from ProWire USA. This is 20 AWG with the, uh, the thin wall. Um, so it's the good stuff. And basically all I do is take these amp connectors for the ECU and go look at what I have on the factory ECU. Not all of the pins are used. So this one, for example, has 22 pins and I'm only gonna use 15 of them. So I just go through, see which ones are used and then cut a bunch of wires to length. So this is all one foot pieces. And then I take the wire stripping tool and strip them back and then take the crimper and crimp them on. I actually have a couple different crimpers. Uh, this one is one that I really like. It's basically a multi-tool. It's from Tool Aid. It's really good. It comes with a bunch of different dies, so you can do a bunch of different uh, types of crimps. But I tried three different dies to get these to work, and they don't work as well as just doing them with this like $14 crimper off Amazon. Um, and the reason for that is when you use this one, it smashes the uh, it smashes the material out and the tolerance on these cavities is very tight. So on those right side, you can see they're a little bit larger where they run uh, power wires. But here where these are just signal wires, it is very difficult to get those in and not have any problems. Um, if they're smashed incorrectly. So with this one, I can actually control that and I, I just crimp where the wire goes and then I crimp the back half uh, where it crimps onto the jacket for strain relief separately. Anyway, uh, it's funny how that is, but these are literally like a 15 or something dollar tool on Amazon, just your typical open barrel crimper, multi size. But anyway, um, shout out to Russ EFI. This is a really nice breakout board. What's cool about it is every pin has two breakouts. So like pin one here, uh, we're going to go pin one to pin one. So when we connect this, um, you know, that'll go into the stock ECU plug, but it goes around and it will connect into pin one. And then I will branch off and go into the max ECU on this other connection, I can solder it in. So basically it gives me a place to, to connect to um, for other things. So other than just being a pass through, you can, this is where you actually tap into it. So you don't have to make a splice uh, coming off of this or up here somewhere. So anyway, um, this is kind of just a long tedious process, literally just cutting crimping wires and connecting them in. Um, so, it's not super enjoyable, but it's got to be done. And so after you do about, I don't think I need all of them, but you know, 80, 90 odd pins uh, will be good. So I'm just going to keep crunching away on that. Welcome in. We're going to go over what wires I need from my Max ECU mini harness to make it run on my piggyback uh, ECU adapter. So let me just show you what I've got here and it, it, hopefully it'll make sense. So the wires that are actually being spliced and cut into my ECU adapter are going to be right here. That is the crank position sensor. So that's getting the crank trigger. And then the gray wires here are the injector drivers. So each of them get two injectors. So two, four, and six. And then these are ignition drivers. There's four of them. One of them won't be used, but I am going to send off one of the injector drivers into another harness that goes into the engine bay in case I want to run staged injection as a test. Um, and then you got your ECU power ground. And then this is throttle position sensor. So this just gets clumped off and I'm going to cut it at about 18 inches. So that'll just get cut right here and uh, this will stay in the vehicle. These are the outputs, and right now I don't have any plans to run like a fan, a boost controller, 
or whatever you want. You could do nitrous or anything else, but I don't have any plans for these right now. So they're just gonna stay coiled up. I'm just gonna keep them somewhat uh, available. And then this group right here is gonna go out into the engine bay. And I have my air temperature sensor and it's gonna get a sensor ground just like this. So they get paired air temp sensor and a sensor ground. And then this is the injector number four. I'm just gonna leave it available um, in case I wanna do a staged injection, like in the charge pipe. I think that'd be fun to play with and show you guys how that works. And then another sensor ground, which is the brown with the air temp sensor. So coolant and air temp sensor. Since I have them available, I'll just each give them their sensor ground. You could technically share them, doesn't really matter, but we've got them, so we're just gonna do that. So I'll branch these guys off. Those guys will go in the engine bay. There's an additional sensor ground if we need it. And then this is a five volt reference. So these I'm just gonna keep coiled up. And if we need them in the future, they will be there. And then lastly, I have the CAN bus, which is this pink and gray, uh, the digital input one, digital input two, analog one and analog two. Those ones I'm gonna keep in the cabin. I think digital input one will be my map switching. Digital input two will be like launch control or something like that. And then analog, I could run a potentiometer to uh, do like boost control or something like that later on. And uh, analog four, I'm not sure yet, but there's always a good use for this kind of stuff. So this is staying, these four um, or five are staying in the cabin of the vehicle. These are going, except those, these are going to the wiring harness adapter. These I'm just gonna coil up and these are actually going out into the engine bay through the firewall. So it's that simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, cut this at 18 inches, and then we're gonna start tidying up everything. All right, so I've got it all chopped up. These are all cut at about 18 inches and everything else is wired up into just some loops. So it looks a little bit messy, but that's okay because we're prototyping at this point and until we get the final piece done, it's okay to have a little bit of disarray and some coiled wires. But really what's cool is this is the main portion that uh, is gonna run the engine. So that's really all we need to get wired into the harness adapter. And then, uh, yeah, we can go from there. One of my favorite things to do is just de-pin things you aren't using. So you'd pull the back half off of this and just release the pins, pull out all the wires that you won't be using. But for right now, I'm not exactly sure what things uh, I'm not gonna use straight away. And it doesn't really hurt to have this just sitting in the glove box area for a minute until I make some decisions on things I wanna use it on. So we're just gonna go with that. Just wanted to show a little bit of how I'm making the harness adapter. Uh, so basically I've got all the wires coiled up that I'm going to be using either in the cabin or in the engine compartment. And then these are the spare outputs. So this stuff is all just to the side. But what I'm actually using are the ignition drivers, the injector drivers, uh, throttle position sensor, this CAN bus guy actually can go over here because that's going to get its own plug. And then the ground uh, is actually split into three. The ECU, the factory ECU, has five or six grounds along here. And I just am using the first three that are available. So uh, everything from the MAX ECU is grounded. So like when it fires the injectors and driver uh, coil drivers and different things like that, it is all grounding. So it needs quite a robust ground circuit. So the ground wire is the largest of this. And like on the stock ECU, instead of like one big wire, it just splits it into like five wires. So um, down here you have like one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. I have to look at my photo. But basically um, my jumper harness will go to this top row here and there these are all the same pin so like for example here pin 99 right here it has an opening and another opening so I just connect it here all this is shared 
this will go through the jumper and just jump back to the ECU. And so the wiring harness will pass this ground into this circuit. It'll share it with the max ECU on here. And then it will also send it back when I solder in my other branch for this last uh, piece right here. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. And then for example, like over here, this is the power. This is the 12 volt power supply for the max ECU. And it is getting shared with the 12 volt that goes to the ECU. So there's this and this guy right here and marked as red. So plug this into the stock ECU, it gets powered and shares the power um, that comes through the wiring harness because this plugs into the, the wiring harness where the power comes in from the main fuse and relay from the vehicle shares on this and so you'll be able to turn on the ECU and the max ECU and they'll be able to live in harmony um really the main bulk of this is the injector or sorry the coil drivers which each get sorry if this will focus they each get their own uh each get their own coil driver or split from uh Cylinders, what is it? One and four, two and five, three and six. And then each of the coil wires, or sorry, each of the uh, injectors splits off into two. So it's the same exact pairs of these. So one injector goes to injectors uh, one and four, two and five and then three and six so because it's not sequential they'll run in batch fire but they're not batched um in chunks of three they're chunks of two so i just matched them to match the same as the ignition driver so those cylinders that travel together as pairs in the engine they go up and down exhaust opposite exhaust and intake they get their ignition batch fire and their fuel batch fire on those same pairs hopefully that makes sense um that's just typically how you run batch fire and throttle position sensor it hasn't been hooked up on the other side yet but it will and then the crank position sensor it's sharing so here you can see it's shared on 79 and then the, that's the trigger, the white, and then the ground, oh my goodness, is shared on 88, pin 88. I don't know on all five VZs if the wiring is the same. From every wiring diagram I could find, they're all kind of different, like year to year, two wheel drive to four wheel drive. Uh, I, I wouldn't trust that my wiring is the exact same as yours. Just tone it out, uh, you can just use like I just use a volt ohm meter, check continuity on everything that you touch. And then when you're done soldering it, check it again. And then before you put power to it, check it again. Because this is fun, but it's not fun if you fry something trying to do it. So triple check yourself. And uh, that um, pretty much concludes that. So we're getting ready to plug this in to the factory ECU, plug this into the wiring harness, and uh, power on the max ECU. And I will do a video of that when I get it up and running. I'll probably just plug it in initially and then I'll do a video where we build the tune specifically for this engine and uh, show you that kind of more in detail. So we're getting really close. It's alive boys, it's alive. <laughs> we're out cruising. Max ECU doing awesome. Don't worry about the check engine light. I have some stuff unplugged, but uh, we're doing absolutely awesome in the 5VZ, the Max ECU. Alrighty, so after a lot of tweaking, finally got the Max ECU bass tune dialed in for the 5VZ 4Runner. Uh, don't worry about the check engine lights and stuff. That's just, I've, I've got a few things unplugged, but we're gonna reset that here soon. It, it originally didn't have any check engine lights. I think it was actually just from the O2 sensor reading, uh, being like rich or lean, trying to figure it out. Um, so don't, yeah, don't worry about that. And then the overdrive off. Um, 
anyway, um, yeah, the bass tune, when you first, and I'll do this more in depth when I actually make the tune uh, video on this, but the bass tune on this has a lot of extra fuel, like your acceleration enrichment and priming pulse and startup and warm up enrichment and after start enrichment all has way too much fuel. So when I would start it, it, it would almost die just from the fuel. So, um, anyway, just had to tune in and, and tweak a bunch of stuff there, put a uh, full tank of 91 octane in it. That's what we got around here. And then, um, I just, just for right now, I uh, put in about like 24 degrees of timing, uh, kind of where it's going to be riding along 24, 25 at full throttle. I haven't even done really much full throttle, but um, it's honestly drives great, like rock steady idle, like just dead steady. Um, and yeah, you can see like driving along just... Yeah, she just drives along. Um, but anyway, I think this is a success. We're gonna just go over this more in details, but yeah, just cruising through a parking lot. Just drives like normal. I can definitely say that it has more power. With the additional fuel you can give it and the ignition timing, it definitely feels like it has more power kind of everywhere, so. That's my update, and it's doing awesome. So uh, look forward to the, the next videos because we got more coming on this. Behind the laptop with a helper driver, everything's going smooth. The Max is seriously the GOAT, dude. This thing probably picked up like 20 horse just in ignition timing and like fuel. Like it, it moves compared to what it used to.